In the last part, Cannavaro was successful in completing the ritual to summon the Hell Knight and tries to kill the princess. Out of nowhere, Javier comes in and chops down Cannavaro's hand to save the princess. Javier was about to deliver another blow but suddenly the ground was trembling, and there is a lightning strike on the statue which destroyed it completely. All the debris from the statue was about to hit the civilians, but are blocked at once by the princess. Javier was facing Cannavaro, as he announced that he has won and now they all will be dead as the Hell Knight was on his side. The smoke clears out and within it emerged the terrifying Hell Knight, but everybody was shocked as it was still incomplete and was missing his horse even his legs, Cannavaro comes to know that the barrier was completely removed before he could complete the ritual. The Hell Knight asks Cannavaro what he wants. Cannavaro points his finger at Javier and ordered him to kill him. The Hell Knight rushed to kill Javier and swung his huge sword. Javier was able to block the attack but the immense pressure from the attack was too much even for him. The Hell Knight teleported behind Javier and was about to deliver the final blow, but he was interrupted by the princess as she attacked him using the wind dagger and Javier was able to evade the attack. The Hell Knight was furious at the princess for interfering with his work and rushed to kill her. Javier used his aura blast and attacked the Hell Knight, and was successful to behead him, and his body flew at some distance, and soon was turned into ashes. Cannavaro was in disbelief as it was impossible for a mere human to kill a Hell Knight. Javier points his sword at Cannavaro and thanked the princess for helping him. The people started to wake up and carry each other to safety. Javier tells Cannavaro that they will have to talk about the details in the palace. Cannavaro was stressed but soon he has an evil smile on his face. Javier was left confused. As Javier looked behind he was terrified to see the Hell Knight rising again from the ashes. Cannavaro explains to him that his mortal attacks are not enough to kill the Hell Knight as it was immortal. The Hell Knight tells Javier that he didn't expect him to be this powerful and apologized for underestimating him. He tells Javier that he is Gyrexius the first legion commander who supports the ruler of hell, and announced that this will be his last fight. Javier introduced himself, and tells him that he will soon send him back to where he was. The Hell Knight rushed to him and attacked him using his sword, Javier was having a hard time deflecting the attacks, and soon he is being cornered by the Hell Knight. Javier dodged another attack, but soon the Hell Knight appeared behind him and Javier blocked the attack which impressed the Hell Knight. Javier dodged all the attacks and was having a hard time keeping up with the teleportation skill. Javier attacked him and forced him to teleport. Javier was waiting for him to get back, and soon the knight attacked from the ground. Javier was successful to deflect the attack, and was about to counter but the Hell Knight gets hold of his leg and throws him on the ground. Due to this, Javier was brutally wounded, the Hell Knight thanks him for such a good fight and was about to deliver the final blow but missed it as Lloyd distracted him as told him that he will back to hell when the summoner dies, and ordered him to leave Javier. The Hell Knight was confused and scared as Lloyd had a very scary face, and thinks that he was some powerful ruler from hell. Lloyd starts to count but the Hell Knight launched an attack on him, and Lloyd was able to evade the attack. But Cannavaro was brutally wounded. The Hell Knight tells him that it will be just fine if he was still breathing. Lloyd was confused as his plan failed miserably. Javier gets up and was about to attack the Hell Knight from behind, but he is forced to back off by the Hell Knight. Javier was all drained up lying on the ground. Lloyd yells at the Hell Knight and asks him to fight him instead and ordered Javier to stay low. The Hell Knight ignored him so did Javier who was going to resume the fight. Lloyd was frustrated and launched a mana blast on the Hell Knight but his attack was easily deflected by the Hell Knight and was sent right back to him. The Hell Knight was about to attack Javier, but Lloyd interfered with the battle as he leaped on its back. Lloyd was able to get hold of him. The Hell Knight tells him that he was a fool to touch him as the mana from the Hell will contaminate his mana heart, and soon he will be dead. Lloyd tells him that it was pretty scary to die like that but he has already purified the black mana multiple times. The Hell Knight was terrified as Lloyd laughed at him. The system tells him that the mana flowing from the Hell Knight has strengthened his mana heart temporarily, but still, he will not be an equal match for the Hell Knight, also the Hell Knight will not ignore him as he considered him a threat. Lloyd locks him, but the Hell Knight had some other plans. The Hell Knight pierced his own body to get rid of him but luckily Lloyd was able to dodge the attack and taunts him. The Hell Knight was frustrated by this and tried to get him off. Soon, 
Javier was back on his feet and was ready to attack the distracted Hell Knight. The Hell Knight tries to block the attack but was hit in the abdomen. Javier tries to hit him once more but he starts to teleport and evade all the attacks. The Hell Knight was frustrated as Lloyd was still clinging to him even when he was teleporting. Lloyd knew that Javier was moving faster than before but he was no match for the Hell Knight's mobility. Also his mana heart is at its limit. He knew that he was on the losing side. Out of nowhere, a screen pops up and tells him to activate the messenger contract which made him even more confused. The system tells him that from now the system is able to give advice personally to the individual, and the system tells him to sing. Javier was having a hard time keeping up with the teleportation. Lloyd was clinging to his back and out of blue started to sing a song, which made the Hell Knight think that it was some kind of ancient magic, as he felt like someone was scratching his brain with an iron nail. Lloyd continued to sing the song and the Hell Knight was trying hard to get Lloyd away from him. Lloyd signals Javier to attack, but Javier too was unable to bear his singing. Lloyd figures it out and finally understands that his parents have forbidden him to sing in front of others. One day in music class, he just sang the starting of a song, but even before he sang the next line the teacher lifted the organ and threw it at him. Also when he tries to sing on Christmas at the church, the pastor threw holy water at him and told his parents that he was possessed by a demon. And now he was using his terrible singing to save the world. The Hell Knight was terrified of his singing and fell to the ground. Javier used his mana to keep him from hearing and gave the final blow. Lloyd was happy that they got rid of him, but Javier tells him that it was not over. Javier asks him to look carefully at the mana around them. Lloyd noticed the dark mana around them and at a distance, the Hell Knight was being reconstructed by the dark mana. Javier asks Lloyd to get back but Lloyd tells him that it was fine as he will be unable to survive. Lloyd starts to move toward the Hell Knight, and Javier tries to stop him from going there. Lloyd bets that if the Knight survived it then Lloyd will become his subordinate for a year, and if he does not survive then Javier will have to dress up as Mrs. Javiella when they will return to the county. Lloyd lifts his shovel and attacked with all his mana, Lloyd was on the ground all drained of mana. Lloyd used his ability to supercharge and absorb the dark mana. As he was absorbing the mana, the Hell Knight tells him that it was too much for his Loki body and he will die due to overload. Lloyd starts to cough blood as the mana was too much for him to handle. But still, he pushed his body to win the battle. Javier and the princess gave their mana in order for him to survive the dark mana. The princess used the healing spell and due to this Lloyd is sure that he will win this time. And finally, all the dark mana was absorbed and purified by him, and he announced that the exorcism was completed as he falls to the ground. The princess was worried about him but Javier assures her that he always ends up like that but he will be just fine. The system informs Lloyd that he has defeated the core commander of hell due to this. The king of hell wants him. At night, we see, Cannavaro was arrested and transported to prison, and the rest of the judgment will be given by the queen herself. But the bigger problem was the construction can't progress as all the workers have lost their strength due to the barrier, and Lloyd was all stressed trying to figure out another way to continue the construction. Lloyd remembered earlier when he woke up, the system informed him that he has absorbed a part of the Hell Knight's power due to which his skill of undead domination has been upgraded, and now he can gain full control over the undead. Lloyd was excited as he knew that if he used the undead it will be a jackpot as it will be more cost-efficient for the county. The system tells him that he has received a new compliment demon possessed an atrocious singer, but Lloyd needed something cool like power of hell or something and strikes a cool pose in front of the mirror. Out of nowhere, there is a knock on the door. As Lloyd opens the door, there is a huge number of undead standing in front of him. Lloyd asks him who are they and the undead starts to perform an ugly transformation which disgusts Lloyd. The undead asks for forgiveness and used a poster to communicate with him. It tells Lloyd that they were the people who were killed by Cannavaro and were roaming around when they felt a power that could give them a physical form and they came here. The undead thank Lloyd for appeasing their vengeful souls, which shocks him. And we come to know that Lloyd buried all the skulls he found and prayed for their peace. The undead tells Lloyd that they have no memories of past life and have no goals, and if they wandered around in the open world they would get exorcised eventually. All the undead bowed in front and pleaded to take them in and give them a chance to repay their debt. Lloyd tells them there will be a lot of work, and asks them how much money will they need. 
The undead tells him that he will not need a salary or feed them as there is no use of such things for them, and demands just a place to live, a cubic meter coffin. Lloyd was pumped up and announced that from now on the undead will be known as the Frontera County Skeleton Squad and was really happy as his dream of free labor was finally fulfilled. Javier woke up due to the chaos and saw the undead, but now he did not care as it was too much for him to understand now, so he goes back to sleep. The next day, the Frontera Skeleton Squad was working tirelessly. Lloyd enjoyed the scene, as all the work was done without any labor pay. Count Namorin fainted as he saw the undead working for Lloyd. Lloyd explained to the Count that he was a summoning genius, and he summoned all the creatures using his shiny eye. The Count was surprised by this. Soon, winter came, and the construction went on without any interruption. We see Javier carefully inspecting his hand and remembering how the princess helped him. Out of nowhere, the princess came, Javier thought she wants a report on the project. But the princess tells him that she was there to meet him, and told him that she wanted him to teach her how to use mana more efficiently just as he did. Javier was a little shy but he accepts the request. Lloyd was looking at both of them from a distance, and remembered how the princess died in the novel. Also, no one helped Javier as everybody thought he had cursed mana and if they helped him they will too end up like the princess and other people close to him. But he changed everything and now Javier was happy more than ever, which made Lloyd proud of himself. After a few days, the construction was finally completed and as promised the Count paid 10x the cost of the construction. Lloyd thanked the Count before leaving and everybody praised Lloyd's bravery. The Count asks Lloyd if he will be his son-in-law and inherit Namorin. Lloyd rejects his offer and tells him that he was the successor of Frontera's estate and assures him that Namorin had its own great successor. As Lloyd was leaving the state, Lloyd asks Javier if he wanted to stay there. Javier tells him that he was the knight of the Frontera estate for the rest of his life and he will never leave his side, and they move on to the Frontera estate. As they reach the estate, the Count and Countess were there to welcome them. Lloyd tries to explain to them about the undead summoning but they were not interested in it. The Count saw Javier in Mrs. Javier's outfit as he lost the bet. The Count hugs Javier and consoled him that he was not wrong and they will always love him as before. Javier was having a hard time, and Lloyd enjoyed the scene from behind. Now, Lloyd had all the cash needed to just lay around and enjoy his lazy rich life. Out of nowhere, the royal messenger comes by and announced that Lloyd has to go to Asfahan on a special mission. Lloyd was in shock. The messenger further tells them that they will depart right now. And Lloyd was kidnapped by the royal guards and without his will, he had go to on a mission. In Anvo, Lloyd was crying like a baby, and Javier tries to console him. The knight in front of them asks Lloyd why was he so upset as he should be happy to get appointed to this honorable task by Her Highness. Lloyd told him that he was not able to stop crying because he was very happy. And then Lloyd starts to cry even more which made him annoyed. A few days earlier, the knight asks the queen why she chose Lloyd to be the envoy. Queen tells him that he was appointed as a diplomat. And tells him that she was sure that Lloyd will handle Asfahan with ease. But he will make a big fuss and cry as he has a dream of living leisurely in the countryside. Also, she knew that Lloyd was the one who defeated the Hell Knight. She tells him to rest assured as Lloyd will get what she needs from Samarkand. Lloyd was in tears, which made the knight question the queen's judgment. After a few days, they finally reach Asfahan country. At the royal court, the soldiers inform the sultan about their arrival, and he orders them to provide all the hospitality the guests deserved. We see the knight was furious at the guards as they were not treating them right. The knight wanted to meet the sultan as soon as possible, but they declined as the sultan was too busy, and tells him that they will have to wait for more than six months. The knight was really pissed now. The guard dropped a padishah which they can use to get anything for free in Asfahan, and left the place. The knight was angry and thinks of getting revenge. He told the royal messenger that they will have to send a letter to the royal kingdom to get reinforcements. The royal messenger asked the knight that if he had seen Lloyd anywhere, the knight ignored the question, and soon they were missing the padishah too. At night, a poor boy was selling torches in the kingdom, but he was unable to sell a single one that day. A stranger approached the poor kid and asked him if he was looking for a place to sleep, and we come to know that it was Lloyd. Lloyd was in front of the most expensive hotel in the capital, and tells the kid that it was his hotel and asks the kid to sign the contract and then the entire hotel will be his. 
The boy was scared and asks Lloyd who was he. Lloyd with an evil face tells him that he was a man with the grave of the almighty Samarkand while showing the Padishar. Lloyd was now in a very expensive restaurant. He announced that he is going to feed all the people in the surrounding and once again showed the Padishar. Later, he was at the silk shop, where he asked the owner to give him the best silk he has and get everything from him while showing him the Padishar. Again, he was at a port and asked the owner to get him all the ships they had as he was going to buy all of them. As he bought all the ships he sent them to the Frontera estate. And soon every merchant in the city came to him and asked him to buy all the stuff from them. And so Lloyd buys everything with the grace of Samarkin. As he was going to buy more stuff, the royal soldier came to arrest him. At the royal court, Lloyd and Javert were being presented to the sultan. The sultan was furious at Lloyd and asked him if he was the one who spent their entire yearly budget. Lloyd introduced himself to the sultan with an evil look. Samarkin recognized him as he was the one who flipped the monster domino and knew that he spent all the money just to meet him. Samarkin was pissed as he knew that he has to stop the upcoming war as when the war breaks out, the first obstacle he will encounter is the Frontera estate. Even if he wanted to destroy Frontera County, with the kingdom's full force his victory is still not guaranteed. So he thinks of killing him right now, but Javier will just blow up the whole capital if he laid a single finger on him. Lloyd knew that Samarkin had no choice but to negotiate. Samarkin was furious as he felt threatened by this man. But he leaves out a sigh and ordered his soldiers to let them go. The sultan asked him if he enjoyed it when he used the padishar, and Lloyd strikes a very embarrassing pose and prays the sultan, due to which the sultan is even more furious. Sultan asks him if he is not afraid of the Magentano's suspicion, as he was eagerly accepting the favor of an enemy country's ruler. Lloyd told him that he did not have any problem as the money the sultan gave him is incomparable to that of the queen. The sultan annoyed asked him if he gave him enough money will he switch sides and betray the queen, to which Lloyd shamelessly agreed. The sultan let out a laugh and asks him what compensation did he need for this great deed. Lloyd asks him if he craved war, to which he tells him if necessary they will have to. Lloyd tells him that they have to first take care of the incited rebellion force full of people agitated by the drought and asks him if he wanted to put an end to this. Lloyd tells him that he will put an end to the drought if he wanted, but in return, he has to talk with the Magentano's special envoys. The sultan was surprised and asks him to tell the details. Lloyd gives him the contract and tricks the sultan to sign it. At night, Samarkin was having a meeting with one of his daughters Sarazid. He orders her to escort Lloyd as he will soon depart to Kandahar province and also tells her that she has to make him her man by any means necessary. The next day, we see, Sarazid asks Lloyd to let her join as she was designated as his escort. Lloyd tells her that he already had won but she insisted to follow him. Lloyd remembered that she was the princess of Asfahan but was confused as to why she was assigned as his escort. And out of nowhere, she struck a stylish pose which shocked Lloyd as it was unexpected of her to be interested in him. But then he figures out that the one behind all this was her father. Lloyd had the plan to solve the drought problems by building a Persian-style underground waterway. Lloyd knew that in the mountains, 10 kilometers from the city, there was a fresh water source and thinks of using it. Soon they reached the capital of Kandahar. Lloyd was tired of traveling and was finally having his break time. But the princess didn't leave him alone and continued to strike the stylish pose with a fierce glare. Lloyd woke up and asks her what was her problem. She told him that she was just trying to take care of him. Lloyd recalls the novel and knew that she was the youngest of the four princesses of the desert, Sarazid, an outstanding prosecutor who reached the level of sword master at a young age. She had never made a public appearance so the people didn't recognize her. Lloyd was now pretending that he didn't know who she was. Also, he has to stop her tempting operation somehow. Lloyd tells her to rest up in her room, but she denied it as she was ordered to be his escort, and she will be with him day and night. Lloyd tells her that there was no need for her to escort him as he had his own escort knight who was a high-level sword master who was much stronger than she was. Lloyd starts to brag about his power and made her humiliated. Sarazid was furious at him and draws her sword. Lloyd mocked her and asked her to kill him, Javier was disgusted by his behavior, and so did the Sarazid. She was so angry that she punched him straight in the face. Lloyd asks Javier to save him, but it seems like Javier was really enjoying the show. The princess was deeply hurt, 
and cursed at him before leaving the room. And finally, Lloyd announced the mission was successful. Lloyd was furious at Javier as he didn't help him. Javier apologized and tells him that he thought he was having a fun time getting beat up by Cerizid so he didn't interfere. The next day, Lloyd and Javier were going out to prepare for the construction project, and they are interrupted by Cerizid. Lloyd tells her that he cannot afford to take her as she will slow him down. Cerizid still insisted to escort him, but Lloyd humiliated her and mocked her for not being a sword master. Cerizid was furious and was about to punch Lloyd but he starts to sing the lubbly he used to sing to make Javier asleep due to which she falls on the ground in deep sleep. As they were out of the palace, all the villagers saw them with sly eyes. Lloyd knew that he has to do something to get the cooperation of the villagers if he wants the construction to move smoothly, and to do so he came up with a plan. Lloyd calls out all the summons and orders Javier and Padong to build a water fountain at the center of the city. And he ordered Goming and Hamong to come with him KM West to the ice caps. As they reached the destination, Hamong chugs a lot of water and was being carried back by Goming. As they reached back to the city, Padong has finished the construction and Hamong pours in the water in the well. The villagers were very happy to see water and ran to get some. Lloyd approached them and asked them if they were happy and announced that they are free to thank him as he was the one who constructed the well. That's it for today guys, thanks for watching.